tutorial starts with a song, <laughs> but it's only a few seconds long. <laughs> Let's get started with animation. Hello folks, recently I did a tutorial about particles emitting particles. I use the n particle world for this, create emitter and emit from object, and it's quite a nice tutorial with nice effects and uh, quite interactive really. Today we'll do a more abstract approach with amazing results. We use the Bifrost graph editor and uh, it's under Windows and um, if you don't have the most current version of the Bifrost graph editor, get it. It's, uh, it's nice to have, it's an important thing and you find it uh, free for download on the Autodesk Bifrost site. So let's open it and we create a new graph. We delete the input because we will use a mesh as an input. So move it to the side just um, briefly. Uh, let me create a sphere. You can create any other kind of object and I hide it, H, and I middle mouse, this is middle mouse uh, important, I middle mouse drag it in here. So this is our new input. So what we want today is we want two particle systems and one feeds into the next one. We could do this with 10, but uh, two are good for a start, I think. So we press tab here and uh, we have uh, the option to create a basic particle graph. It's visible here because under recent, because I used it when while preparing this tutorial here. Uh, if you don't see this, obviously you don't, um, just type in particles. And one of the options is basic particles graph. Basic particles graph gives us this node which has no input and no output. It seems so. It does have inputs and outputs because we need to expand it in order to work with it. Right mouse click and we explode it. The explosion shows us four nodes. One is the source particles, one is the collider, one is the particle solver settings, one is the simulate particles. And what, I, what I'll do right away is I delete the collider because we don't want to deal with collisions today. Collider would be, well, it collides with, um, well, a table, for example, or at the top of the table, which we had, would have to create and place in the scene, obviously. Now we copy this, control C, and we paste it, control V. So we have the same particle system doubled. Now comes the beauty of this process. We want a connection between this input and the output. And we need connections like these. And uh, it's very easy. We go from mesh to geometry. The source particles. The particle looks for a source and the source is the sp sphere. Now this whole process has an exit, an output, which is called particles or killed particles, but we use the particles. And now comes the crucial point here. We connect the output of the first particle system, which is the one on the left, to the input of the one on the right. You might uh, want to have a look at the left, the first particle system. It has an input from the mesh. The second one has the input from the particles. This is the crucial connection, this one. Quite beautiful actually. And now we just need to create this connection between the output of the second simulation. Everything looks clear, no red alarms, whatever. And here we have this particle system, which looks, which falls down because of gravity. We talked about particles and gravity in other tutorials. It's all sitting in these nodes here. What I want to do now is I select these three and I create a backdrop. That's the right mouse button. I create a backdrop so we have it here and we can move it around like this if we want to. Now, um, you might have noticed that we only see the second particle system. We don't see that one. That one produces these particles, but we don't see these particles because they're not linked directly to the output. And that's what we're going to do now. This is the output of this compound. It goes into the geometry. Yeah, that's uh, very good. But we want 
it to go directly to the output as well. So we see this particle system plus the derivative of this particle system. Well, it looks more dense, but uh, it is not really visible what particle is what. Now comes the part which is not directly related to the uh, particle emits particle section. We just want to add some beauty in order to discriminate these two systems. So if you're fine with this setup, this is the crucial uh, connection here. Uh, just leave this tutorial. Now we deal with beauty. We create a shader and this is the icon for the hyper shader. And um, same thing here, you press the tab key and the standard Arnold shader is called AI standard surface. And that's what I'm creating. And I want to discriminate it from the from the rest. That's why I choose a color which is sort of obvious. And um, I middle mouse drag this icon, this one, into my graph. So I have a standard surface there, shader here, material, uh, but I don't know, what, know where to put it. The procedure how to apply a material to something in this graph is tap again and it is material you type in material and here you have the assign material node it's important let's meditate on this briefly we need to assign the material to our particles and that's why we need an assign material node the assigned material node is quite good. We now disconnect the particles, the connection to the output, and we connect the particles to the geometry of the assigned material node, and then the output of the assigned material to the input here. What do we do with this one? Well, this is uh, uh, easy now. We have several inputs here, and one is the surface material. And this is a surface shader, so we connect it here. Now, um, everything is connected. We minimize this and we run the simulation again. And now we have a mixture between two colors. The gray ones are the ones from the first simulation and the secondary particles are the ones in blue. Now, I want to discriminate them even better. I go back to the Bifrost graph and I go to the source particles and have a look here. Um, here I have the size. When I crank up the size from 0 0.1 to say, well, 0 0.3, so what we see now is that the size changes. It's three times bigger, but the secondary particles are bigger as well. Why is that? Well, very easy to explain once you think about it. These particles here hand over their properties to these particles. And uh, these particles inherit the size of the particles. That's why when we change something here, things will change here. Even if you pick this and change the size here, to 0 0.05, make them really tiny, the blue ones, the blue ones will still have the same size as the gray ones because the gray ones hand over that property of about size. There are certain ways to get around this and I show you a, a beautiful method which uh, I got demonstrated in the Bifrost graph area of Autodesk, uh, a very nice forum uh, where you can ask questions and you get nice answers. And uh, this is one of the answers. Uh, the trick was to open the particle properties and here you have the size. And when you put in something special for the size, this uh, will change the size uh, behavior of the second particle system. And uh, the recommendation was a fractal field, a fractal noise field, this one, 
and um, it has certain parameters with inputs if you want to put things in it has a default a magnitude of one and you can put out the noise to the size and uh, th this is the only thing I'm, I'm doing and now the simulation looks like this the secondary particles have different sizes. Now we do a few changes in order to see this even better. Uh, this is the first particle stream, the gray one, and we want a rate not of 100 particles per second but 0 0.2 particles per second. Very few. Let's have a look. Now you see a much better way to visualize these things because you know, now you have this puffing effect. I change another thing. I go to the second particle stream and uh, here I want to reduce the rate as well, maybe to 10. Now I increase the size of the first particles 0 0.5 for example the gray ones I change the magnitude to I reduce it to 0 0.3 so it's not that strong now we see clearly that the secondary particles come from the first ones Last thing I want to change is I go back to the first particle system and here I have the speed and I change the speed from 2 to 10. So the first particles shoot out more strongly. And now of course I need more particles in the second set, maybe 40 per second. So you see we don't have many things here in the outliner. We need to do everything in the Bifrost Graph Editor. This simulation is much faster than with the end particle system. And if you introduce a collider now, it will just behave almost in real time. So dive into the Bifrost Graph Editor and the most important thing is have a very good time. Bye bye.